What makes a hymn our favourite? Well, it might be the tune that stirs the emotions or the words that express truth in a beautiful way. It might be what's associated with a hymn that makes it special. Perhaps it was the one you remember from school or the hymn sung at your father's funeral. Or perhaps your favourite hymn occupies a special place on your faith journey, helped you believe even. Whether it's for any of these or a different reason, most of us could probably name our favourite hymn and explain why we'd chosen it. Thank you to the people who've shared with us what can be a very personal story about their favourite song of worship. The hymn that I'd like to choose as my favourite hymn is The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. The reason for me choosing this is because I look as God as our shepherd and whatever we ask of him will be given to us. And that is my reason for choosing this hymn. Hi, I'm Amabel, and this is my favourite hymn, Shine Jesus Shine. We usually sing this hymn at the end of the All Age service. This song is full of energy as it is often the last hymn. Sometimes the young children and some of the adults play some of the instruments along with the hymn. The reason I love this hymn is because it's very tuneful and we are thanking Jesus for being the light in our lives. 
Thank you, Jesus, for shining on us and not letting the darkness take over. We are always sheltered by your light and glory. Experts tell us that the tone of our voice is unique to us, just like the irises of our eyes and the prints of our fingertips. Each is special to us and not the same as anyone else's on this planet. How appropriate then that when we come to church, we worship our creator with a voice we have in common with every other human, but a voice that has our own unique tone, our common humanity and our unique individuality all on show together when we sing. Why else might we sing when we come to church? Well, it's not surprising singing has become part of worship because it is a spiritual activity. 
Singing beautiful lyrics helps us expand our imagination and appreciate the world around us. Singing helps to calm negative mental chatter, the distracting and helpful thoughts we can have at times. Singing helps us to let go, to transcend our physical self. And if you want to test this out, try the following. Lose yourself in singing a hymn and then just notice how you feel when it ends. There's a powerful effect that happens when you stop singing. A moment when you come back into your body. Singing is a spiritual activity. My favourite hymn is I the Lord of Sea and Sky. I like this hymn because to me it explains the story of Christianity itself. The first verse talks about people who dwell in sin and darkness and how God's hand will save them. And the next verse is about how he sent his son to save us all. And the chorus is about how we're all called as followers of Christ to follow him and to spread the good news and to worship him. And that mixed with the lovely melody and the beautiful lyrics, I love singing this in church. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them.
Be Still My Soul is one of my favourite hymns. I was brought up in a Catholic church and when I went to church there in Ireland, I never took any notice of hymns. But years later, being in England and I came to worship at St. Thomas's Church, Church of England, I was introduced to so many wonderful hymns, beautiful hymns, and it opened up a new world for me. But uh, Be Still My Soul is one of the ones that sticks very hard in my mind because of the beauty of the, the words and the beauty of the music by Sibelius. And we, at that particular time in St. Thomas's, we had a church choir and we learned the harmonies to it and it sort of was right in there. It also introduced me to classical music, which I started to listen to after listening to Finlandia. So Be Still My Soul, one of my favourite hymns.
Music can make us cry. It can make us laugh. It can ignite passion. And when we sing, apparently we release endorphins, those good chemicals we produce in our bodies when we do good things. Singing can help people come more easily to terms with grieving and loss and can help us to accept certain very testing emotions. Perhaps it's not surprising then that the God who wants us to live life and live it to the full has us singing in church in a way that helps our emotional life as well as our spiritual, in a way that helps every part of the people he loves to thrive. There's a saying, we need to be singing from the same hymn sheet. It's a saying often heard when people are trying to build strong teams, promote unity and work towards the same goal. Singing is a good and effective way in which we build each other up. When we sing from the same hymn sheet in our church communities, we strengthen the body of Christ. When we join our voices together, we grow a little closer together. I can only think it makes God glad that his people sing as one. Hello. One of my favourite hymns is My Song is Love Unknown. I think it's a particularly wonderful combination of words and music. The words are by a 17th century clergyman called Samuel Crossman, who was a contemporary of the great English poet George Herbert, and I find them striking for their simplicity, but also their depth of thought. Uh, they describe the love of God as love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. And I just think that's such a wonderful idea that God's love doesn't just make us worthy of love, but makes us capable of it. Um, there's also the exclamation, sweet injuries, referring to Jesus's suffering. Sweet in the sense that his suffering was able to demonstrate that we can have eternal life. And finally, uh, there's a verse about Jesus being laid to rest after the crucifixion, which reminds us that it was our imperfection that brought uh, Jesus to earth in the first place. Um, in life, no house, no home, my Lord on earth might have. In death, no friendly tomb, but what a stranger gave. What may I say, heaven was his home, but mine the tomb wherein he lay. The tune to which this poem is usually sung was written by the English composer John Ireland in 1925, and I have a great personal affection for John Ireland and his music. Among other things, I've performed his cello sonata frequently, which was written just shortly before this hymn tune was. My own cello teacher learnt the piece from the cellist who learnt it with John Ireland and gave the first performance. Um, although Ireland had great success as a composer, he could be very self-critical and introspective. And I think you can hear that in a lot of his music and in this hymn tune. He lost his parents early and struggled with uh, relationships all his life. Um, but his music remains popular to this day and in my eyes, rightly so. It's very much of its time in the 1920s, but it is a perfect fit for the words that were written 300 years earlier, practically. For me, this combination is a reminder that um, the marriage of Christian tradition and Christian innovation can be considerably greater than the sum of its parts. And I'd just like to finish with the words that are inscribed on John Ireland's tombstone, which bring us back to where we started. It's from the Song of Songs. Many waters cannot drown love. Mm -hmm.